guys, uh, Rick and James here once again. I'm delighted to welcome the UK based band The Ingester. Um, the Ingester play music in the vein of Rob Zombie, mixed with a bit of Faith No More, but also I find it a wee bit um, avant garde as well. So I relate it to a Norwegian band, um, Arcturus, as well. And can also say, Ash, um, especially your clean singing, it reminds me of uh, Simon Hasney's as well. So that's a major plus. But um, how are you guys doing? How have you been coping through lockdown? Is your friends and family and everything okay? Yeah, all, all, all very good. Thank you for that shout out, vocal wise. Much fish. Um, yeah, no, we're, we're all very good. We, we, you know, we do as well as everyone else can. But yeah, we all have this this as a bit of fun too. So it's probably a little bit lighter for us than a lot of other people. Yeah. What about you guys, Skinface? Oh, by the way, I should introduce the band. We've got Skinface, the lead guitarist. We've got Morax, the drummer, and we've got Ash, the vocalist. I do apologise for that. So how about you guys, Skinface, Morax? Um, <clears throat> it kind of hit us at the wrong time because we were just gearing up to do a bit of, a bit of gigging. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we tried to, to turn it into a kind of positive and, you know, basically with an album shoot. Yeah, yeah, it's it, it's kind of screwed up our our time frame a little bit, but um, but you know, we we've used it well. Yeah, well, well that's what we're going to come on to. At least uh, we can also say that you're not behind any other bands really, because we all they all face the same situation. But it's good to see. Um, so with your second single, Knife Blower, being released in December 2019, then so have you guys been using this thing constructively and written more songs then? Yeah. Um, <laughs> We've got um, we've got an album that we're doing in uh, July. I hope to have that out. Well, <clears throat> I don't know. Um, yeah, about yeah. Around the autumn time, we're planning to have it out, but it's the TBC, as they say. So, how many songs um, are on the album then? Uh, at the moment, we've got ten tracks. Yeah. So, yeah. so the two the two that you've heard, like Knife Blower and Apophenia, from our EP yeah. won't be on the album. So the 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 the, the, the EP that's called the in, introducing is very much that. It's introducing us. We've we basically released that and then we you know got screwed by COVID. So we're we're in a place where we're reintroducing ourselves. Yeah. Probably our album, we've we've written it, we're working on it now, and we'll be recruit uh, recording in July. So um everything that we've got coming up is going to be um new fresh and interesting well i'm certainly looking forward to hearing it certainly by the the two singles that came out there well the the ep but uh, so with some of the songs already um would you say that some of the songs are maybe like a year and a half old already or would you say the songs were mainly written uh during the latter parts of last year uh yeah i mean some of the songs um uh, so Apophenia and Knife Blow were written, um, I don't know, maybe three, three, four years ago we started working on those. Oh, no, no, no. And, and some of those, some of the songs that are going to be on the record would date to that time as well. But some of them have only been written in the last few months. So it's um, it's been a, it's been a while in the making. Yeah. So for those that are new to the band, then, how would you say it compares to your older material? Have you, do you think you've maybe found the sound that you've been looking for? Um... Yeah, I mean, I think I think it's kind of expanded in both ways. Like some of it's heavier, some of it's a bit more experimental. So, um, sort of, if, if it was a book, then uh, knife blow and epiphany is like the preface, and uh, this is going to be chapter one. I like that. I like that. What I also liked about knife blower and epiphany was like they didn't sound the same, especially like knife blower. There was a lot more clean singing in it, um, but also I like the wee blast beat at the end. I mean, I'm more into my more extreme metal, but I like the wee blast beat. Is there more of that in the album? There are some blast beats. There's a lot of blast beats. There's a lot of blast beats, yes. There's a heavy bit of blast beats. There's also some sort of a, uh, some double kicky, machine heady sort of stuff on there. There's uh, as well as all acoustic guitars and, and ukulele as well. So we've, we've let it all hang out on this one. <laughs> I, th I think it when it, I think it when it comes to your songs, there's just not going to be a boundaries. Nobody's ever going to pigeonhole yourselves into one sound. You guys are just going to do music that you guys want to play, um, and yeah. if 
if the if the public like it, if the punters like it, then that's a bonus for you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I think one, one, one of my favourite albums is um, is Faith No More's Angel Dust because they touch so many styles on that record. Yeah. And every song sounds like them from the first bar. So that that's the kind of model of how you can, you know, really spread out but still not lose your identity. What band is that, Mark? That's the band called Faith No More. That's the Reeves and Mortimer Club. No idea. <laughs> <laughs> So with um, the two singles, I know it's with the two singles being released at different times. Um, were they recorded at different times, or did you record no, them? They were recorded at the same time. Okay, so is there anything that you're going to do differently um, in the recording of the EP that you're going to take forward with the recording of the album? Uh, well, that's if there's anything that we're going to do differently, I would say with the mu the music between now and then is different. Yeah, uh, but the great thing about those tracks was, as you said, they're a great little introduction. But there's there is the variety that we're absolutely going for on their overall album. So yeah, in terms of the recording process, probably nothing. The writing, lots of difference. There's all we're all over the shop. So uh, that that's basically going to be, you know. What should what you should expect? There's all sorts in the stories and all sorts in the music. Yeah, yeah. Um, with you guys being quiet on the music front, then is it made you look at the more business side of the band as well, like keeping your name out there and things? Has it made you like look at merch and marketing and things like that now that you've got more time to yourselves for the band? Um. I think I think we you know we'll we'll get we're going to do a load of t-shirts going to do all of that stuff. Um, we haven't the lockdown hasn't made us do that more. Yeah. If thing we've been focused on writing the album and making sure that the album comes out in the right way, then the t-shirts and stuff will follow that. We've we've got the designs. We've been fortunate enough to have some lovely people um, that have designed some awesome things for us, like a t-shirt at the back with give me knife relief <laughs> on the back of the t-shirt it's quite quite a fun idea so uh yeah we've got all that stuff on the way we just haven't we haven't shared it yet so until <laughs> now <laughs> <laughs> well, what about um is, is all the other things like ready for the album like have you got do you know where you're going to record it who's going to produce it and mix it for you as well as the the cover work the artwork is all that already um, so we're, we're sorted on where we're going to record it, <coughs> and who's doing it. Um, but yeah, the artwork's kind of come together. Yeah, cool. Appreciate that, guys. Thank you very much for that. So, talking about the the writing process, how's the, how are the songs constructed in the studio? I mean, are the the main songwriters for the Jester, or does is the Jester like uh, where all the members contribute to the songs? <laughs> Um, it's, um, quite, yeah, it's quite a traditional kind of approach where like someone will have an idea, maybe rough out a demo, and then we'll just we'll just kind of thrash it out in the room. Mm. Um, yeah, and then even with lyrics, if someone has a lyrical idea, then they'll you know they'll sort of go as far as they can with it, and then they kick the ball to someone else when they get stuck. So it, it, yeah, it's it's a good way. Of it. mm. Definitely. So with the look, then how did you communicate your ideas to each other? Um, carry a pigeon. Ca carry, a, carry a pigeon Ouija board. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, like just e email an idea, then someone would kind of, you know, flesh it out with, you know, well, program some drums if you're not the drummer, so you can get your idea down, send it off, somebody else shoves something else on it, and it just does the rounds on email. It's, um, yeah, it's 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 not ideal, but it's 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 come. Up I love that we we do the rounds and email. We abuse each other to the point of like absolute like carnage, and then eventually you come to somewhere where you agree on it, basically. <laughs> yeah. That's so, the music industry in a nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> abuse, abuse, agreement. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's how far we are. Yeah, because that's where I was coming to. Imagine when was the last time that you were actually able to rehearse together? When was the last time you were together as a band? Oh, yeah, well, no, we've done it. I'm rehearsed. 
<laughs> so, what, what, what have you done recently? I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good job we're wearing white. Um, anyway. <laughs> Got a mask on. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm imagining... Uh, if there, I think there's seven of them in the band, so there must be like uh, differences of opinion sometimes, but imagine... Well, is there blood in the walls and fisticuffs in the studios and stuff like that, or is it quite a cohesive band? I think we, we're quite yeah, an occasional wrestle. <laughs> oil. Goose fat. Oil and a wrestle. <laughs> and it's all, it's all agreed. Because the thing is, we've all been around the block a few times and bands, and we, you know, we know how not to handle things. Um, <laughs> so, you know, we, yeah, if you want the band to last. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, So it sounds as if you just want as hassle free as possible, which is always good to hear. Yeah, that's right. So, Ash, with you being the main vocalist of the band, then do you write all the lyrics or do you welcome contributions from all the band? You know, this is the first band I've been in where I haven't done all of the lyrics. Um, but what I have liked is having um the odd concept that we we build on within the band so yeah. uh, a couple of bits like uh skin and i do some lyrics uh like he might have the concept and then i build around that or i might uh you know give the concept and then he'll build around that so um yeah it's uh it's novel for me but equally that's why i'm doing this something different so yeah. So what would you say your uh, your themes would be? Have they changed since uh, you did the EP? No, I think basically you find a metaphor for everything and then you write and, you know, find find a fun angle, find the angle that you want to that you want to say that everyone will moan about or they won't moan about or they'll embrace and they'll or not embrace. Yeah. And you you go full full bore. And that's, that's the way you go for it. <laughs> it must be a major hope away from you guys, Skin Face Morax, because, uh, well, more so yourself, Morax, and the rest of the guys, because, like, getting lyrics and stuff like that must be a hell of a, a pressure, you know? It's certainly something that I wouldn't be able to do, so it's um, it must be a headache away from you guys. It is. What, so, yeah, when, when I come up with the song I do, I tend to come up with, like, the... the, the you know, the riff and the tune and the chords and the, and the melody and the lyrics all together. Yeah. Um, but then, like, I know when I'm, you know, it's, the, the, I mean, the words don't come particularly naturally to me, so I might come up with two or three lines on the concept and then say, there you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Finish it off, because you know what you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Here, here, here's the weird, my thinkings. Ash, can you embellish my weird mind? Yeah. <laughs> there we go. As he has done with my explanation just now. <laughs> there was a perfect example. But also, um, one thing that I love in the band as well, especially in the live front, is having more than one vocalist. Um, if I've got my facts right, then I think you've potentially got three vocalists. I just think that, um, it brings out so much more in the song, uh, so much diversity. Is using the three vocals used more in the, in the upcoming album? Yeah, there'll definitely be layers of vocals on the new album. Um, and basically, it allows me to do, you know, what I feel, feel like doing. And then and there's, there's layers that, that support that, and it's brilliant. Yeah. Well, like I say, um, it certainly adds more to the life front. So, uh, I mean, one of my favourite bands, for example, Neo, they've got the three vocalists and it's just it's just sublime to watch. So I'm looking, looking forward to seeing you guys doing it. Um, that's cool. That's cool. Thanks for that. Um, so you released two videos for Introducing the Ingester in October and December 2019. And like every other band releasing music at that time, it must be pissing off that you didn't get that much time to promote it in the life front. Um, so what touring commitments did you have planned that got shelved in 2020? Well, so long. We, we were looking at a club tour, weren't we? We had, we had some club dates. Some good festival stuff as well. Yeah, we had, we had a few a few festival things lined up. Um, 
for you know it, it, was, it was it was a big disappointment but as you say like everyone's in the same boat so, yeah um were you um going to venture north of the border were you coming to scotland in one of your club dates well yeah we, we haven't got anything booked yet but um yeah that's what that's what we're looking at we've um yeah we've, we've not got it all sorted in the diary yet. we're looking at all sorts of places so um yeah you never know you never know yeah we've got some good there's some good clown contacts in um aberdeen and dundee and stuff that's what I say to bands that come to Scotland. It's not just Glasgow and Edinburgh. Um, Aberdeen's got, because Aberdeen uh, is starved of gigs, when gigs do come up, they're always well crowded. Um, and the same for Dundee and Perth even as well. But Glasgow and Edinburgh have got a cracking scene as well. So um, it should go down well. So on the subject of touring commitments... <laughs> On the subject of touring commitments, I was just wondering if you had any re-announcements that happened today. Oh, Sorry. Shall I do it? Shall you do it? <laughs> no, you should do it. Yeah. So very. Yeah. Really pleased. We've had basically the best week. Good. We've had. Uh, we would announce a download next year, a week ago. Excellent. And today we were announced for Bloodstock this year. So we've got the year that any metal band in the UK would want. So, yeah. and we've also got Badger Fest. We've got our own headline shows, including Halloween. We've got loads of stuff going on and we're going to book loads more. So, including the album, obviously. So... Couldn't be happier. Well, it certainly seems to be like from a year of pretty much silence from the investor. Um, this year, it's going to be like we're never going to stop hearing from the investor. Hopefully. <laughs> I, I just hope we can take it. We're not the physically fittest specimens, are we? <laughs> not anymore. <laughs> so I take it They're talking about themselves. I. <laughs> 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 Well, that's absolutely brilliant news that you're going to be uh, on Bloodstock like two years running. So, um, I is it going to be like the Sophie stage? What is it? Is it the We're on New Blood stage. Blood, blood stage. Right? Yeah, New New Blood stage. Um, we think we're on a Sunday. Um, and then down to next year. Yeah, not sure about it. <laughs> Sorry? Serious question though. Will you be sober on the Sunday? No. Oh. Uh, no. <laughs> I will have to be, but I'm sure they won't. Well, to, to be fair, if you're not if you're not sober on a Tuesday, you won't be sober on a Sunday. <laughs> so. Yeah, but uh, I, I'm out. I'm out celebrating because we got an ounce for Bloodstock today. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. That's absolutely brilliant news. Um, we'll certainly be down. Uh, we'll certainly be covering it um, if things keep on going the way that they're going. So we'll no doubt catch up with Ingester uh, down there and we'll certainly watch you live. Um, it should certainly be uh, theatrical. It'll be something for the for the punters to, to see, like seven <laughs> maniacs and clown outs uh, just going mental, which is kind of a good time. So, cool. Um, yeah, so there will of course be so no land shows in the near future then. Um, is it going to be more, is Bloodstock going to be like one of your first gigs back or are you going to have like a couple of shows first? The one um, we're going to see how it, see how it um, pans out in terms of what we can book it with the lead up to it. Yeah. But at the moment, um, it may very well be, you know, basically our introduction because... We did Hammerfest, Paradise Lost, Camelot, etc., a little while ago, and then we got to the place where all the world stopped. We released our EP, and we couldn't do all, honor all the touring commitments that we'd got. Yeah. So here we are, and what will happen? What will be will be. So hopefully we'll get a warm up in. If we don't, we'll be ready. We're looking forward to it. Yeah, it would, it'd be quite epic if Bloodstock was 
first gig back. Yeah, it's it. it's almost tempting to not yeah. bother with anything else and then just do that as the first one. Uh, where the hell were you? <laughs> it was for me really quick, you know. <laughs> oh, thank God for the whiteness. <laughs> That's not what he was saying. Well, one of my friends, uh, the band over in Ireland, Words That Burn, Bloodstock, is actually the first gig back. So, um, so, so, how are you going to prep for this then? Where, where do you guys rehearse? Um, I must, it must also be like, um, it'll be quite funny when you all guys turn up to the studio and you're like, who are you again? What is it you guys play? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's when you're wearing a mask. <laughs> Yeah. So, so when you do uh, like where is it you rehearse it's all over the place really I mean we we kind of without giving too much away we, we spread to the four winds um, in terms of our, our various locations so we've, we've, we've got a, we've got two or three places that we that we use on a regular basis yeah um, uh, the, the fact that we're on two different screens right now tells you that we're not that close together yeah so, yeah there, there's uh, yeah we have a we're, we're split but we get together very regularly or we will be now yeah well your blood must surely be pumping because this is all exciting news for the ingester everything is the jigsaw that you wanted to happen last year is now happening now so um you're just jumping at the bit ready to let the world know then Jeff they are coming for them. That's right. Yeah, literally, literally just oh just been what a week. Download blood stock, all the tunes, blood uh badge fest, we've got it all like lining up. We just need to uh yeah, just spend a little bit of time getting ready to rip it up. So you you're saying 10 songs for the album. Did you have something like 20 songs written then you've or 16, 18 songs and you've now just they decided on a final thing. Yeah, well, I can't, you know, I can't remember exactly how many ideas we came up with, but we, we've narrowed it down from, I don't know, we probably have maybe 15 or 16 that we that we were sort of kicking about. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we've narrowed it down to, to the... Uh... And was the idea always going to be an album? Was the next one, did you ever discuss of releasing another EP first and then an album, or are you going to do an album then something else? I think you've kind of you've got to you've got to think about alternative ways of doing things these days. Um, yeah, because you know some bands, even established bands, just don't do the album. They, they don't count the single songs or or, or EPs. So um, yeah, we yeah we we did we did think about that, but I think we just sort of we wanted to you know plant the flag in the ground or the tent. Don't call. Yeah, flag over the top. <laughs> Flag always goes on the top. That's what I'm doing wrong. Um, Is that why I asked? So, we've got to do an album. We've just got to do an album. Yeah, I mean, I'm the same. Like, um, I also review uh, albums as well and EPs. But sometimes you get an absolutely brilliant EP, and you're like, ah, you just want that more. But that's it finished. Whereas with an album, it's got a beginning, middle, and an end, and you can follow the story. And I much prefer albums. You know, you can relate to it much more. I think. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so because you're in different locations then I take it the idea of like virtual gigs I've seen a number of bands uh, like do virtual gigs um, was that something that you even considered like just keeping the name of Ingester out there um, I think it would be such a logistical nightmare it, yeah, yeah. E e even that would be tricky um, I think I think we've, all, we've always just had our eye on getting back on stage it seems and anything else to distract from that was, wasn't really something to, to do. I think it's all yeah, I, I think if we if we basically had what would probably be the first introduction to us, because obviously, yeah, we did Hammer Fest and we were ready to go out there. We were absolutely ready to go out there and play a load of live shows. Yeah. But mostly everyone's first introduction to us is, you know, a, an online streaming show. That's not what we want. We want basically everyone to come down, get all clowned up, and go. Smell the sun dust. Okay. Yeah, go massively for the show, and that's that's exactly what we want. So yeah, the virtual thing. Maybe if there's another lockdown, 
But for us, really, we just want to go full ball for everything now. Yeah. I mean, um, it's certainly looking as if it's going to head that way. Things are going to be a lot better now. I mean, they're talking about foreign travel again, so it must be must be all good. It must be all good. All right, guys, thanks, <laughs> thanks for that. So having known you guys for some time on social media then, things seem to be very settled on the band members' front. So how would you say you keep it all together? Like, for example, when negotiating what stays in and what goes out of a song? Well, we hardly ever see each other. That's why we have <laughs> um, uh, no, I think as I say, we, we've kind of you know we've all been we've all been around the block a bit in, in other in other bands. Um, with, you know, it's not our first rodeo, so we know how to sort of phrase issues like that. Yeah. Um, and you know, at the end of the day, we all became that yeah. we were similar to crack team, um, and we're you know we eyes on the prize. It's all been management speak. I don't know what. We can't say that. <laughs> Oh, no. 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 <laughs> yeah. it's, it's quite all right. Quite all right. When, when, when you're in a band with a bunch of blokes that want to wear a load of latex and makeup, <laughs> there's a certain affinity between each other. Is, that, the thing is, this is just what you I can embrace. You can embrace this. <laughs> I was thinking you would probably start talking about Molly Crew there or something like that, but I'm glad to see that you're <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, um, not quite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but um, talk, you've brought up this festival once or twice already. But I see you guys are playing Badger Fest in October uh, this year. So, are you looking forward to playing that gig as well? Yeah, we're looking forward to our set. Are you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see, this is the thing. This is the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like the set being the pun on the Badger thing. Literally, days of pun war is what I have to cope with. <laughs> so, yeah, so loving that lo that was one that, yeah, you, that's totally you, Skin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> a good pun's timeless. <laughs> a good pun is timeless, yeah. We're absolutely looking forward to it. It looks epic um, without even the need for the, the uh, dutty, dutty, Dutty. <laughs> but I was just wondering, is there any other bands in the field that you're extremely looking forward to seeing as well? It's Raging Speed Hall in there, aren't they? Yes. Yeah. Raging, yes, very well, but yeah, right. That can't be a bit of Raging Speed. Also looking forward to uh, Gutworm Part 2, but I can't remember their name. Chris Buffett. Chris 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 Waddle. Chris, 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 Chris Waddle. <laughs> <laughs> Even if you could pronounce it, we can't hear you. But yeah, crit, crit. <laughs> what do I stand there? Absolutely, distinctly minty, Monty. <laughs> <laughs> I'd also add in Red Method, and uh, um, yeah. there's a band in Birmingham I quite like, Netherhall. So that's. I've interviewed that band um, and they're a top bunch of blokes as well. Uh, I really like their music as well. But um, there's a good Scottish contingent as well. There's um, Iron Altar coming down. Um, there's uh, God Eater. I think that's such, such a brilliant name for a band. I love it. Love it. But um, yeah, there's certainly a good Scottish contingent coming down. Um, but so how do you... Badger Fest is also getting quite a bit of a reputation for itself. I think this is its fourth or fifth year, um, but it's getting bigger and bigger every time. So how did you guys get yourself onto the bill? Did John contact yourselves or did you apply for it? Remember? No. Um, basically, I'd seen how well the festival was doing yeah. the last couple of years, and um, it was a case of, I want to do that. So... Um, apply, applied uh, for uh, last year's, but it was already booked. Yeah. So, um, you know, we'd been told, yeah, you know, interesting, but we're already booked. So said, you know, uh, well, bear us in mind for next year. And then when next year rolled around, uh, you know, here we are. So very happy to get involved in it. Because it's, yeah, as you said, there aren't many festivals that start, last more than a year, yeah, and then build upon that. So I think um, 
Badger should be very proud of that and every band should be proud of playing it because it's going to be one of those ones that's going to endure so that's good Totally agree, totally agree. In fact, you almost brought a tear to my eye there with your answer, so thank you for that. But <laughs> um, do you think uh, do you think you're going to like try and incorporate the gig, the festival, with um, more of your own gigs, or is that just going to be a standout for a weekend and then it may be something later on that? Well, the night before we're playing with the Heretic Order, which um, I'm sure you probably appreciate as well. A good, good yeah. bunch. So we're doing one in uh, Hitchin the night before, and then we'll uh, make our way up to Manchester the following day. So, yeah, um, and it's obviously October. So <laughs> Halloween is our favourite month of the year. <laughs> well, like I say, um, you should certainly come up north. Uh, like Glasgow, there's, I mean, there's certainly people that I can get you in contact with and venues to play. Um, same with Edinburgh. Uh, Aberdeen, there's one or two people that I know, but certainly Glasgow and Edinburgh I can help uh, with that. But like you say, you're a you've been an established act before. You've got all the contacts, so hopefully we get to see you on this side of the wall. That is, if we let you in. <laughs> Ricky, Ricky, we'll slide into your DMs. So, <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a plan. Sounds like a plan. It may cost you a pint. Um, Point of GNT. Uh, no, Jack Yeah, <laughs> you, you sound like you sound like a professional gin gin taster. Is it like passion fruit and jojoba or something like that you're drinking? <laughs> I'm joking. There's no, 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 no gin in this. This is all Lambrini. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he must be a handful, guys. I feel sorry. I feel your pain. No, you, 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 you spotted that. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm now maybe, well, maybe we're all roughly the same age. I mean, I'm 32, all right, I'm 47, but uh, before the internet, then magazines and fanzines were the places to find out about new bands and trends, but publications are now replaced with thousands of websites catering for all genres. So do you think that some of the passion has been lost, or do you think that the internet has been a good thing for music and a good thing for the ingester, for example? Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll go first, or do you want to? <laughs> um, I don't know. I, mean, I think it's. I think it's been a good thing. Yeah, I think in terms of the passion, I think it's probably less obvious because with with a fanzine, you know, there's you can obviously see the amount of work and dedication that's gone into it. Yeah. But um, with everything sort of being democratized and dispersed via you know bypassing record labels and everything, just. You know, there's no, there's no barrier. It's not as obvious because it's easy to do. Um, yeah. So, like, you know, speaking speak personally, I think there's a huge upside to it. So, although it's, it's not as good for artists trying to earn a crust, um, you know, what, what's, what's bad about having immediate access to all this wonderful stuff? Yeah. 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 Very valid points. What about yourself, Morat? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's easier to kind of share your art quicker without having to go through all the rigmarole of like the, the health and safety of all, if you know what I mean. Yeah. So you can, um, we can finish our demo, we can just spin it around our little inner circle of the town, and then we can just put it out. We don't have to send it off to be checked by. This, that, and the other. Yeah. Gatekeepers, that's the Gatekeepers. No, no gatekeepers. Gatekeepers. Yeah. Cool. Thank you yeah. very much for that. Thank you for that. So what about yourself, Ash? Yeah, I agree. I think the internet's brilliant for basically getting everyone out there or any band out there. Um, it's just, it's you know, obviously tough in terms of any band that wants to endure in terms of, you know, uh, how do they last? Yeah. With, within that because you know Spotify etc we all, we all want to have a 200 billion plays that mean that we can buy a gin and tonic <laughs> a, a gin and tonic yeah exactly um, yeah yeah in Weatherspoons, nowhere else definitely not in London um, but yeah now outside of that obviously it's it's great that bands, bands can get out there and, it, and it's brilliant but 
I guess what it what it means is every, you know uh, all the bands have to try a little bit harder because yeah, getting a billion plays on on uh, Spotify is harder than selling a CD. Yeah, yeah you've got to put an extra sauce on everything. Yeah, yeah, sauce. I, 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 there's a lot of valid, a lot of valid points that you raise there. I think it's a good sword. Um, I mean, in the late eighties, early eighties, I'd, I'd done like tape trading, and there was nothing more than sending two pound away. Then a couple of days later, you would get an envelope, and you would get um, stickers coming out and you get a letter from the band and you get a demo and then you'd listen to it and you're like, mm, I don't know if I like that. But because you've invested in it, you would listen to it again, listen to it again and make up your mind then. Now, as you say, Spotify, you can listen to a tune, 10 seconds, oh, no, that's crap. Move on to the next band because there's millions of bands out there. And like you say, Ash, bands just have to try harder now to get heard and be unique. You need to be different. And having seven clowns on stage is certainly different. So... Um, well, it is, it is, and it is. At the end of the day, we're all on the same playlist. We're all on the same, you know, word of mouth. Everyone's got to um, do the the Spotify sharing, etc. So, and and as you just said, there's, you know, it give it gives more more bands the opportunity. Yeah. Equally, it makes it crowded. Yes. I mean, you get people recording albums in their bedroom. I mean, they're recording albums in their bedroom. Um, I mean, I grew up in an age where TV should be burned. You know, it was cassettes and vinyl, as you guys know. Um, in fact, I heard like vinyl was out selling CDs for the first time in decades, but um, we'll certainly have the nostalgia with it all. But yeah, I think it's a double-edged sword. Yeah. Thank, thanks very much for your opinion, guys. Uh, but now's the time where I'll probably have to record another 40-minute session because I'm going to ask you... Um, about the instruments that you play. So, so right. yes, Skin, so what are you going to use to record the album with then? See you in about an hour. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so I'll take you through our, our sort of basic live rigs, uh, first of all. So me and um, Gaspard, the other guitar player, we both use uh, Mesa cabs uh, loaded with Celestian B30s. Okay. Um, just standard, St you, you, you know, it's, it's, it's a classic metal cab. Um, you know what you're getting. It cuts through really nicely in a live mix uh, and in a studio mix. Uh, in terms of heads, Gaspard is using a, a Marshall DSL 100. Um, I'm using a, a P6505. Um, we're both hitting those at the front with a, with a tube screamer, and that's, that's our basic tone. Yeah. All um, right. What's it? So I do the I do the leads. So um, what I've been doing uh, for the, the solo boost um, is I kind of had this this setup where I hit two pedals at once and I sort of made this kind of contraption so I can get a gain boost and a volume boost at the same time. So I had like another drive pedal um, in front of the tube screamer, yeah. which was a gain boost, and yeah. then I had. Um, uh, a six band EQ in the loop to give me the volume boost and a bit of mid boost as well. I hit those both at the same time to give me the uh, give me the solo. But um, I've kind of thought, you know, that I'm over engineering this, um, and I've just gone back to using the two channels on the PV. So like the dream channel, the rhythm channel, I'm just cranking that. That's my that's my rhythm tone. Yeah. And then going to the sort of super saturated uh, red channel for the for the lead tone. Um, in terms of guitars, like our main stage guitar is, well, Gaspard's always used um, an LTD Viper with uh, active EMGs. Yeah. So for him, like it's sort of the classic kind of Slayer sound, like active pickups into a boost, uh -huh. into a Marvel, jobs are good. Yeah. Um, so, and I have, I have well, I've, I've my main, my two main guitars for this are both uh, Fender Strats. Um, one of them is a uh, sort of a, a Japanese-made Fender model with, with two Fender humbuckers, which are high output, nice and tight, tight low end, really good. Um, and the other one's like a sort of, sort of Frankenstein strat that I've assembled over the years. I've had sort of 20 odd years, various bits of it. It's like Trigger's brood thrown from the waters, you know, you know, it's had X number of different bodies and pickups and nuts and uh, cheese and that. 
and that's got um same strap, same strap. always the same strap <laughs> <laughs> and that's got um seymour duncan pop rails in it um just you know homage to homage to made because uh it's, it's the same pickups the same kind of woods and setup that it's like, do, the other, do the other band members say that uh you're a wee bit too noisy skin <laughs> they do, yeah, but yes, yeah, 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 they, yeah, they, they have to. Um, it's been commented on. It has been commented on, um, but uh, still a V. <laughs> Great stuff. Thank you, very, thank you very much for that skin. Now, Ash, I've always wanted to know about a uh, vocalist then. Do you have a particular microphone that you like to use? Have you went through a few and you've now decided on what you want to use? Um, well, I've got a Rebel mic stand. So that's an awesome company. <laughs> um, and I use Sennheiser radio mics. So, yeah. Nothing. Um, but that was quite short and sweet, wasn't it? Yeah. It was. Yeah. I was like, oh, oh God. <laughs> yeah. No, there's, there's some technical stuff. No, but like, uh, was, it the, was that the first one that you, you tried and you were happy with? Or did you go through a couple first? Oh, no. So, yeah. You know, when you when you sing it, you've used a house mic one time, sucked in when you're about to do a big note, and then basically got everyone else's gap from the last 20 years into the back of your throat, and then wonder why you 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 know you can't sing for the next fucking three months. Oh uh, <laughs> you can pass into the, for the next three months. So yeah, generally you well, you want to go for your own mic, and um I happen to use Sennheiser. So, Radio mics because there's six of us on stage and that gets busy. Yeah. And don't worry, you can fucking see it if you like. But um, <laughs> see, because you haven't been doing any, like, how have you been keeping your voice, your vocals trained then? Are you like singing in the shower, singing in the car, just singing all the time? Or how are you keeping your voice in tune? Just, you know, singing, yeah, singing along with all the favorite bands and sing along with, um, the Mopop Awards in, uh, you know, um, on a Friday evening with the occasional g &T. <laughs> So, yeah, just uh, yeah. nothing specific yet. But as we build to all the big, big, big shows, yeah, uh, that will change. Yeah, cool. Thank you very much. Well, listen, guys, thank you very much. For oh, sorry, Morax, I forgot about the drummer there, as uh, most bands do, so... That's fine. <laughs> yeah, should, should we carry on, or...? Yeah, fine. thank you, guys. Defend us, I was only kidding, Morax. Who could forget you? Who could forget you? So what's your drum set up, then? Uh, I use a Mopex Sun, and I have uh, a variety of coasty symbols. Yeah, that's about it. <laughs> so, what about um, your snare sound? Is it quite difficult to get the snare sound that you wanted? Um, I use two snares, but I have a, I have a quite a few, so I just kind of chop and change whichever one I feel. Yeah. So you found the one that you're going to use for the for the album, then, yeah. Yes, but I can't tell you what it is. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I say it's like, thanks very much, guys. Yeah. <laughs> thanks for that. It's yeah. awesome, but you see, this is the, it's all going to be awesome, but. <laughs> it's not the same one that Lars all would use on St. Anger, tell you that. No, my dinner's in that now. <laughs> <laughs> That's see. I see. No, so where will we find uh, uh, the ingester on the social media then? I've got a funny feeling this is going to be another short answer, but. Everywhere. Everywhere. Yeah, pretty much. So you've only got a Facebook, yeah. page, Facebook page at the moment. Are you going to like uh, spread out, spread your wings? We've got Instagram with um, myself, uh, Skin, and um, Morax as well. Yeah. So we're all on there, and the band. Um, we've got a Twitter page, um, and I've got a secret uh, TikTok for. <gasps> dancers um <laughs> but i've not told the band about that <laughs> you must be scared everybody but do me a favor see all these social media links put them in your facebook page because see trying to find 
um, uh, is find information on you guys, researching you guys. You know what, Ricky? That's not your fault. It's no one's fault. Do you know what's happened? What's happened? If you go into Alison Chains's page, it'll be the same. It's Facebook's fault. <laughs> They've just changed it, so all of the, the all of the stuff you expect to find when you go to an about page, yeah, is not there. Yeah, I had no. Idea. It's changing all the time, isn't it? So, I mean, like I say, most mostful times uh, we've got like eighteen thousand likes and stuff like that. But see, post we can see the reach, and it's not anywhere near that. You know, it's just uh, unless you pay for it, and then it's not that great either. So, uh, but listen, guys, it's been an absolute pleasure. I'm eagerly awaiting the um, the album. I'm eagerly awaiting to see a badger fest. I'm eagerly awaiting to see come up north of the border. So, um, I'm, so this certainly will not be the last time that we talk. Um, so, I hope not. when you get your album, you know where to send. It. Uh, we'll review it. Like I say, I've got my radio shows as well. I've got one in UK, one in America. So we'll certainly promote the show of it because it's worth promoting. Um, so yeah, uh, so no doubt when I see you at these gigs, festivals, I'll get you at the bar, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, guys. You're tired looking sweaty blokes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, guys, and uh, take care of yourself and see you guys. Better. It's Ricky. Yes, now. Thanks. Thanks.